So let's talk about modern espresso. What makes espresso modern as opposed to traditional? Um, <laughs> what am I even talking about? So when I'm talking about traditional espresso, I'm talking about when you go into a cafe and you order an espresso, you'll see a barista throw some coffee into a portafilter, give it a couple of taps, tamp it, and pull you a one or two in 30 seconds. That's a very traditional shot and it's delicious. And there's a reason every cafe is serving you these drinks. Um, when I talk about modern espresso, I'm talking about what are the ultra nerds in these coffee communities like the Espresso Aficionados Discord? Um, what are they doing to improve the quality of the espresso? And what tools are they using to achieve better results? So in front of me, I have a lot of different things. Uh, the first thing I have here is a coffee. So I'm going to pull a couple shots of this coffee. This is from Cyclas, a Colombian. Uh, I have this in my freezer for, I don't know, six months. Uh, I just thought it out. Uh, but this is, you know, Cyclas roast medium light. So this is going to be a semi-modern roast level for an espresso. Uh, the next tool, of course, is scale. You're going to want to know how much you're putting in and how much you're putting out. And that's really important for what comes next. Uh, measuring your extraction yield. And what extraction yield is really how much of the solid coffee is ending up in your cup. Right. So when you hear someone say, oh, this espresso is a 20 percent extraction yield, that means 20 percent of the solid coffee mass has ended up in your cup. And uh, in a traditional espresso, the ideal range that's often quoted to be somewhere about 18 to 22 percent. In modern espresso, it's not unheard of to get uh, extraction yields from the 25 to 26 percent range. And, you know, in some cases, people are pushing the boundaries, getting as high as 28 uh, percent and some people are claiming 30 percent extraction yield you know whether or not that tastes good is another question but you can extract a lot more coffee into your cup using some of these modern techniques so another couple tools i have here are uh, a wdt tool uh, this is one that i designed uh, and this really helps with evenness of extraction and i also have here a funnel also used for wdt um, to left that i have a series of different filters and meshes along with a series of portafilters and baskets. So starting on the end here, um, in this wooden handled portafilter, I have a, a Breville dual boiler stock double basket. Um, in this Breville dual boiler uh, bottomless, I have a Pullman 17 to 19 gram basket. So just by looking at these baskets, you can see that there's a difference in not only the diameter on the bottom of these baskets, but also the size and uh, layout of the holes themselves. So on the Pullman basket, the holes go much closer to the edge than on the Breville dual boiler stock basket. And this plays a big role in evening out your extraction because ideally you want your water to flow evenly through the puck. And um, I'll show you something, uh, some work from Stefan Rive, Stefan Rive, sorry. <laughs> Stefan, Stefan, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, American. Um, but showing you why it's important to get an even flow of water through your puck and how that affects your extraction. Um, now in the middle here, I have a series of filters. So on the top here is a Flare 58 screen, and this was meant to go on top of your puck in your basket to protect your puck, um, specifically for the Flare 58, but this thing works amazingly for any espresso machine. And it sits on top, and what it does is it evens the flow, it protects the top of your puck from getting like, you know, uh, hit or with sprays of water if your um, dispersion screen is a little uneven. And it also um, allows a little bit more water to go around the edges. And that's important because no matter which basket you're using, you're not having holes on the edges. So there's fewer holes for your uh, coffee to exit, which means you need more water to go through the perimeter holes. So, um, that's one thing that the 458 basket is doing, is, uh, excuse me, the 58 screen is doing. It's helping the water go evenly on top of the puck and also adding a little bit more water around the edges of the puck. Now these bottom three things are uh, things that you put on the bottom of your basket. So these two things here are 53 millimeter uh, screens. And these fit perfectly, Let's see what this is. This is a VST 20 gram basket. And these 53 millimeter screens fit perfectly. In the bottom of that. So you can uh, use this and put it on the bottom. Um, otherwise here I have these two and a quarter inch Chemex filters that have been punched. These are Chemex filters that I punch with this two and a quarter uh, EK tools punch. 
Um, and all of these things I'll leave links to in the description so you can pick them up yourself. But this uh, particular filter size fits perfectly in the bottom of this Pullman basket. So um, the big difference with these bottom filters versus the top filter, the top filter is really protecting your puck. It's increasing a little bit of flow around the edges. Whereas the bottom filter, what it does is it basically takes these little tiny holes, which your copy all has to channel into one of these little holes, and it extends the area in which the copy can, the water can exit through the bottom of your bed. So it really evens out your extraction. Um, so let me give you here, I'll show you a little picture from Stéphane Rives. Um, so this is a, an experiment he did where basically he pulled a shot with a bottom paper filter on the right and without a bottom paper filter on the left. And then he cut out concentric rings and measured the uh, re residual extraction yield that remained in the rings of the coffee. So essentially what happened here is if you look at this puck, you have this dark edge around the ring and he cut just the outer portion of this puck off and extracted how much coffee is actually there. So you'll see that um, a lot of the um, so coffee solids were not being extracted from the edges of the puck. Whereas when you include the paper filter on the bottom, you get a much more even uh, color on the puck itself and a much more even uh, extraction across, uh, you know, uh, across the entire puck. And what that resulted for him in his experiments was a 3% difference in the extraction yield. And that's really coming from evening out the flow um, uh, through the puck. So today I just want to show you what does an exist uh, traditional espresso shot look like and how does that compare to a modern shot? Uh, and we'll do a quick taste test to see if it's worth the effort. Okay, for this first shot, let's do a more traditional style shot where we basically just grind directly into a porta filter, give it a couple of taps on our palm and then tap it. So I uh, here pre-weighed two 16 gram doses. I'll just give it a spritz of RDT here. A little bit of water to keep the static down. I'll dose it into this DF64. And in this grinder, I'm using SSP multi-purpose burrs. Those are, uh, some people would say more brew focused. Um, I really enjoy them for espresso just because of how extracting they are and how uniform that grind is. So in my basket, or in my porta filter, I have a stock Breville dual boiler basket. So if you were to buy a dual boiler today, this is what you would get. Uh, I've actually only used it, you know, maybe 10 times. So it's pretty, it's pretty new. Okay, so let's go ahead and grind this directly into the porta filter. You can see we have a nice amount of coffee here. Let's give it a couple taps. Distribute that coffee real gently. Now you have some nice center mounted coffee. So we'll give it a temp. Any excess grounds on the basket. There you go. You know, a nice, flat, beautiful puck. So let's pull a shot. Get this basket locked in. And I have in my dual boiler 4060 water. And what we're going to be doing today is using a full flow uh, flat pressure profile. So whatever comes out of this. Uh, whatever it hits, it's going to stay there. We're not going to mess with this Slayer Mod at BDB at all. Just hit it on full flow and we'll, we'll pull a very traditional style shot. was 32.74 grams of output. 
Um, the other thing I want to want you to look at is when you actually knock out the puck. What does that puck look like? So let's take a look. Grab the portafilter. See this puck for the top. Yeah, not really noticing any defects. That's great. From the bottom, take a look at this puck. You can see there's some dark spots on the bottom, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the final comparison. So what we'll do next is pull a more uh, modern shot where we're trying to really maximize both evenness of copy within the basket as well as the evenness of water flowing through the puck. And it starts exactly the same with 16 grams of coffee. A couple of spritzes of RDT, shake it up. Load it into the DF. So for the uh, stock dual boiler basket, I was grinding at about 9.25 on the DF64. I'm gonna take it down to about 6.5 for this bottom filtered um, modern espresso shot. Um, prior, previously I was grinding directly into the porta filter. Now I'll grind into a dosing cup because we'll be WDTing anyway. All right, that coffee is ground. So let's take our porta filter. Inside, I keep my screen so that it warms a little bit. And we'll just dry the basket. Uh, okay, so I mentioned before, we're looking for the maximum evenness. So we'll use this Chemex paper filter that's been punched to a two and a quarter inch diameter. Fully saturate it with sprays from the RDT bottle and put it in to the bottom of the basket. So you'll see that because it's fully saturated, the water is helping this basket um, make good, con it's making, helping the basket and the paper filter make good contact, but because it's so wet, it's, it's sliding around. So just take your uh, cotton towel or maybe a microfiber towel and give it a couple dabs. And you can see now that it's been spotted dry and that's keeping it from moving um, as easily. So this one, I did not dry enough. Let's push it down, put a little bit more dry, and now it's more stuck. Okay. So we'll dose the coffee. And then I'll pop a funnel on top here and WDT. So I just want to start at the bottom of the, uh, making contact with the paper filter bottom and going around in circles so that you're evenly breaking up any clumps. And then you want to bring up the WTT about a third of the way up the uh, basket and go around again. And then again, about two thirds of the way up the basket. And then finally on top, we'll just make sure that the coffee looks really evenly distributed across the top of the basket. So now our coffee is nice and evenly distributed within the basket. We can tap. Just clear off the grinds on the side there. And just like before, beautiful flat bed. Um, unlike before, what we'll actually do is put a Flare 58 screen um, on top. You don't have to use a Flare 58 screen in particular. You can, sell all, you can get any number one of these meshes. And some people actually put the same filters on top. And that will keep the water um, flowing really evenly through the puck, as well as increasing the flow on the outside edges of the puck. So let's pull a shot with this. All right, so I'll lock this port filter in. Get our cut, tear it. Make sure we get a nice view. And um, unlike before when we were doing a flat pressure profile, I have here actually modified 
my Breville dual boiler to have a Slayer mod, and which allows me to control the flow of coffee through, um, through the pump, or actually that actually makes it through to the basket. So before we we're doing a flat flow profile, which allowed you know maximum pressure kind of constant and slowly tapers. Um, but now what we'll do is do what's called a dynamic bloom, or at least that's what it's referred to on the Espresso Aficionado's Discord, where we'll first uh, do a pre-infusion up to about six bar with, about, with fast flow. Then we'll close off, shut off the flow. That will naturally let pressure decline as water comes through the puck. And once it hits about two bars, we'll hit it at about uh, five ml per second, characteristic pump flow uh, for the rest of the remainder of the shot. And that was 33.17 grams. Okay, so the other thing I wanna show you is what this puck looks like when you knock it out. First of all, you have your flare screen here, and um, you have your flare screen. And to remove the flare screen, just tap on it until the puck kind of unseats, and then the flare screen is a little bit outside of the top of the basket and you can push down. Just shear off that screen and then your puck will kind of come out real naturally. Okay, so why don't we measure the extraction yields of these two shots and give them a taste. All right, we're all set up here. So I got these two shots I pulled. You see this blue cut, blue handle was the first shot and this white handle was the second shot. The cut was dissipated a little bit. It's been cool, it's been cooling down. So um, you see here the puck from the traditional shot on the left and the puck from this more modern style on the right. In front of me, you have what's called a, a digital refractometer. This one's specifically made for coffee. And that means internally inside this machine, they have a, a, an equation that converts this BRICS refraction index into a coffee-like TDS. And we'll be using that internal um, metric today to compare the this relative strengths of these coffees. These are both about uh, one to two. This one's a little longer. This one was a little under. So, um, you know, they're pretty close in terms of ratio. Um, so the first thing we want to do uh, is just start by calibrating this refractometer. And to do that, I'll just add a couple of drops of water here, turn it on with this cooling metal puck, and it's reading non-zero, so we'll just calibrate it. Now it's reading zero, dry it out. So the first thing we want to do is stir our samples. So we'll stir this one first. Grab a dropper. Just drop a couple drops of coffee into the refractometer. And then uh, use this little metal mushroom to equilibrate the temperature with the room. Okay, actually uh, what happens with these refractometers is if what you're measuring is hotter than your um, calibration, your calibrated level, you'll actually get a lower TDS reading. So it's really important to get uh, really, first of all, to calibrate to the temperature of the room you're in. Um, to use everything, room temperature, don't use anything hot or cold, it's fresh from the tap, for example. And um, make sure that everything's um, at the same temperature when you're reading. So let's give it a reading here. This is reading 10.93. Um, because it's about a one to two ratio, you can just double this. So this is pretty close to a 22% extraction yield. So why don't we measure the second sample by first cleaning this. And uh, to clean it, I will drop DI water into the refractometer and clean the surface as well as I can three times. So we'll stir this second espresso, which is the more modern style of espresso. High extraction, um, high evenness, which ideally maps to a higher extraction. So take a couple drops of this, put it in here. We'll grab our mushroom, 
our heat dissipating mushroom. Put it on here. We'll let this sit for a couple of minutes while it um, equilibriates and give it a reading. So this one's reading at 12.72. So this one's about a 25% extraction yield. You know, roughly, I'll put the, uh, the full calculation down below. Um, but what you're seeing here is a 3% extraction yield boost, and we're getting much higher extraction yields. If you're pulling longer, you can extract better. And you know what, honestly, if you dial in a little better, probably you could push this, this particular coffee up, um, this particular coffee up to 26, sometimes 27%. I've heard people hitting that theoretical maximum of uh, 30%. And if you're pulling longer, if you pull a one to three, one to three point five, one to four, one to five even, you can hit those very high numbers. Whether or not that's desirable, that's you know very subjective. Um, because honestly, like pulling long with a very even puck is gonna have similar consequences to pulling long with a uneven puck. You'll have those same kind of characteristics coming out. Okay, so just for the sake of my, my, my machine, I'm gonna clean this. Why don't we give these a taste? We'll talk about the taste and then let's talk about why some of those tastes might be manifesting. So this is the uh, first shot, the traditional shot. It's actually pretty good. Um, I spent a little bit of time dialing in these shots, especially this one, um, the traditional shot. So initially you get a little hint of acidity, acidity. There's a little bit of fruitiness, a little bit of citrus. Oh yeah, in the finish, you're getting kind of a caramelly, you know, mm, sweetness and a nice body and texture. So, um, you know, it is a little, I want to say like, it has a taste of fines, which is a little bitter, a little drying, a little, it's not quite gritty, but like silty. Okay, so we can try this uh, more modern high evenness shot. Yeah, you know, it's, it's worlds different. The thing with any espresso, no matter how you pull it, you can dial it in. Even these more modern style, evenness of um, extraction shots, you can dial in to be fruitier, or you can dial in to be more chocolatey. So this one, because it's a little bit faster, was well, dialed in to be a little bit fruitier, and that you can really, I can really taste that. This one is more acidic uh, than the first one. That's mostly because of the way I've dialed it. Um, what's really noticeable is how smooth it is and how lacking any sort of harsh, bitter tones there are here. Oh yeah, it's just so good. It's like clean. Clean tangerine acidity. Oh, it's so good. And it, it's, you know, mouthwateringly juicy. It's it's really making me want to drink more, which is, oh, it's so good. Um, the caramel and the, you know, the chocolate finish. It's In this particular shot, the way it's been pulled, it's more of an afterthought, like that fruitiness, that smoothness, that sweetness and creaminess, and that texture is really making a huge impact on, on this espresso. So um, this one, you know, honestly, very good shot. If I got this at a ca cafe, honestly, I would be surprised because cafe espresso is not always the best. So same citrus notes, just a little rougher around the edges, right? A little bit more of that silty grittiness. Uh, maybe, it, you know, it tastes like it's got like a rough filter over it. And this one is just ultra clean, ultra smooth, so juicy, so nice. Oh man, this is, this is really great. So I'm not going to say that this espresso is bad. In fact, it's a pretty good espresso. If you got this in a shop, you know, I think you would be impressed with it. It's better than a bad espresso. It's better than an average espresso. It is a good espresso. This one is something different, right? Um, and it comes to, you know, whenever you're optimizing anything, the last couple percent of difference is so hard to get. Like you saw how much work it was to get from here to here. It was very different, right? The amount of effort you had to put in. Um, the different equipment you need uh, to do it, but um, it makes a totally huge difference. So the last thing I want to look at, I'll show you guys here, is, is these pucks. So I'm going to zoom in on these guys. So take a look at these pucks. What you'll see here is that there's a darkish ring along the outside of this puck. So um, if you take a look at Stefan Reib's um, slide, this darkness, dark, these dark regions on the bottom of your puck, those are associated with under extraction. So a lot of that bitterness, a lot of that kind of harshness and kind of that, you know, lack of smoothness and cohesiveness in this um, traditional style espresso. It's coming from this type of thing, these dark regions, these under extracted regions. This coffee is not being extracted evenly, but look at the new modern even style of espresso. It's almost completely even. There are a couple dark spots here, but they're really faint. And if you were to actually break open this puck, 
Look at the cross section. That darkness does not extend very deep into the puck at all. It's like a surface uh, under extraction. Whereas here, you're getting a lot more under extraction, you know, deeper into the puck. And, you know, really that coffee is being differentially extracted. And that's, um, in my, you know, what I would guess is unevenness of this extraction is what's really contributing a lot to the um, difference in extraction yield. Um, the bottom filter, I think, is not really there to filter out the fines, although I think it does. Um, it's there really to help even out the flow through the puck. Same thing with that top mesh screen. It's there to even out the flow through the puck. And you can really visually see it. But more importantly, you can taste it. You can taste it in these two cups. You know, a lot of people, especially people that don't drink a lot of espresso or haven't optimized it themselves, they'll tell you, they'll probably tell you, you know, they can't notice a big difference. They're, they're very similar and they truly are very similar. But this one is just slightly more refined. Um, and I, hands down, any day of the week, if you gave me these blind, I could tell you that this was the modern espresso. It's just so much smoother and um, so much cleaner. <laughs> All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video showing you how to make a modern espresso um, optimized for extraction, evenness, and extraction yield. If you have a, a flow control machine, go ahead and try it. If you don't have a flow control machine, try it. You know, just having the bottom filter and the top mesh screen allows you to grind so much finer and get uh, more even extraction. All right, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it.